Hi, Helen Keplinger with Keplinger Wines and Vermilion Wine, and I wanted to talk to you about Vermilion. I'm here with our 2017 Vermilion, which is smelling really delicious. We've been smelling some young fermentations in the 2020 vintage, and the smells are all really, the aromatics are very primary, so it's really nice to smell something as complex and seamless as a 2017. <laughs> so I'll tell you a little bit about Vermilion. It's a wine that we make with the same uh, philosophy for quality and terroir as Keplinger, but we source from vineyards um, that are less expensive and, um, and therefore we can hit this bottle price. So everything is made by us. We're not buying up any bulk wine or leftovers from anyone else. And we focus a lot on working with our growers. We have two main vineyards for Vermilion. They're both up in the foothills. Uh, both have gorgeous red soils, and um, one of them is, has some granite outcroppings. The other one is just really volcanic, beautiful red soil. Um, and the varietals that we have there in those two vineyards are um, Grenache and Morved in a vineyard called Swansboro that's just outside of Placerville at an elevation of about 2,900 feet. And the other vineyard is a lower elevation, um, about 2,200 feet and we have Petit Syrah and a little bit of Grenache that comes from that vineyard as well. And then when we do our blends for Keplinger, we have a pretty strict classification system that we use. And so anything that doesn't make the final wine, which we're just trying to craft the best wines we can, gets declassified into Vermilion because there's nothing wrong with the wine, it's just that we're trying to make the best blends. Um, so for winemaking, they're made in a very similar style. Uh, native yeast and just going for purity and simplicity and not adding, um, I don't like to add things to my fermentations. I think there are a lot of products that get used, enzymes and tannins and things like that, that um, I'm not interested in using at all. I'm a purist and I care about good ingredients and an expression of a site and a vineyard. Um, everything gets aged in barrels. Um, we use mostly large format barrels actually, not, not too many small barrels, but um, this was a better place for us to be talking to you today. So here we are surrounded by some small barrels. Um, the wine spends about 18 months in barrel before it's bottled. And we're just looking for a really seamless wine that's ready to drink as soon as you open the bottle. So this is a terrifically um, flexible wine. It has loads of red fruit and spice, and it has a medium body and a medium weight. It's very silky. Um, there's a lot of strawberry and, um, and red fruit, red vine, Swedish fish that we get from the Grenache. And then also darker fruited notes like bramble and blackberry, um, boysenberry that comes from the Petite Syrah and the Syrah, and a lot of spice that comes, a lot of garrigue from the Rhone varietals as well. So it's got a lot of different layers. And in terms of food pairings, it's a great wine to reach for because it's not too heavy for summer drinking and it's not too light for winter drinking and it matches just about anything. So it's a casual wine that you can pull out with pizza or burgers or something from the grill or if you're making a more um, polished gourmet meal, it matches anything from risotto to roasted duck to I don't know, help me out here. Pork chops, <laughs> um, steaks. So it's a great wine and, and it's something that I think hits a lot, of, uh, a lot of different palettes and a lot of different plates. So we hope you enjoy it and we're really delighted to get to work with you and we really appreciate your enthusiasm and your support for the wine and for what we do. Thanks.